Please. I got a question on charitable events where you collect money for them. Do we keep any handling charge before we pour the money onto the charity? That depends on the particular event. Uh, for the majority of the events, no. State, the state charity event, we do have a percentage that's negotiated with that charity as far as what we do keep for a handling of that to help pay for because we endure or incur and endure a lot of overhead within the office and a lot of printing and out of pocket. So and, and there are some selective situations where other regions where regions do keep some overhead money. That's but that's not a across the board, that's, that's generally <coughs> by events. Other questions? Yes. Okay. yes. Okay, we, we have a, our party and we designated so much for the state charity. How do you divide that? I mean, eventually, obviously, it all goes into one pocket, but we No, no. What, what happens, the money comes in and you advise us at the state office where that money should end up at. So there's no separate check needed, but there is, and that's where reports are so important. And we'll talk a little bit about that. We need those reports very timely so that we can get those checks processed appropriately and quickly and out to the whoever should get it if we are doing a charity event. And I don't want this conversation to be monopolized just by charity events, but that's a lot of what we do, and a lot of what the, the counties and regions do, so we want to address this. Um, we're very proud of our philanthropic activity. We're, we're givers, and it, people really appreciate that. And that does help our public image, no question about that. However, somebody said a little while ago, we are a charity. Some people don't really understand that. And when they say, uh, you know, a charitable organization, they think that means it's somebody whose job it is to go out and raise funds and support charities. 501c3, charitable not-for-profit, designation by the IRS, means that we are the charity. And contributions to us are tax deductible. We're a charity just like any of those other folks that people give money to. It's a tax deductible contribution. Uh, for years we've heard that, well, since we're a, a charity organization, so much of our money has to be given away. I don't know where they come up with that. that. That's not what a charitable organization means. So we don't want to be greedy. We're happy to go out and help people whenever we can. But they're also, we, uh, and we won't point fingers, you know who you are, but we have areas in the state where it seems like they have event after event after event to help out this soup kitchen and this food bank and this toy event and this women's shelter, and on and on and on, and meanwhile, they're not supporting the organization. We're not really, well, we are a little bit, I guess, we're not really bitching, and we appreciate that people want to help others out, but don't forget that whole thing about the airplane. We've got to make sure we take care of ourselves first so that we're healthy, otherwise we're not going to be out there to help any of these other people. So remember that occasionally we need to do stuff to help us out. And while we're proud that we were able to give $61,467 to the Indiana Children's Wish Fund this year. We don't want to just take that from ourselves. We, we heard of uh, some people that were considering, well, we had this other event, but to, to tidy, to strengthen this pot up, well, we're going to take some of this and put it over there. We're back to the pants. It's just coming out of a different pocket that's not really found money. It wasn't raised for that charity. That was money that should have gone to support our efforts and things that we need to do. And if we need to give that to other recognized charities, we need to be able to do that. Not just arbitrarily pull it around and throw it around. We need to keep track of what goes on at home. So keep that in mind when we're doing these events. It is truly one pair of pants for all of us. And I'll get to just a second. One thing I want to clarify, there is one situation that people are correct, we are required to give some money to charities, and that's charitable gaming. There is a specific percentage we're required of the net profit from the bingo hall we have to, especially under the new rules, that, well, the new interpretation of the rules, I should say. So again, the concept of it's all one pair of pants really works here. 
Because while those specific dollars that you earmark for a charity to go come into the general account, the check to that charity very well and probably will come out of the bingo account to satisfy those needs. So I want to make sure people understand that. That's something mechanically we do, but it's all in ink. It's the same pair of pants. Just because a check came out of this account doesn't mean anything. The money came from your event and is channeled back to that. Okay? And you had a question? Yeah. Um, when you go to like businesses, you're putting on an event and you go to say a business and you're asking for donations. It's real easy to go in and say, hey, we're a bait and we're trying to help the local animal shelter to get donations. What do you say to businesses that you're going to, you know, uh, say Bob Evans and you're asking them for it to be a t-shirt sponsor for your event. How do you approach them when it's to make money just specifically for a bait? How do you, what would you say to them? Yeah, let me repeat that for everybody. The question is, it, it's easier to go to, a, say, a Bob Evans and say, hey, would you give us a $300 t-shirt sponsorship or a $100 t-shirt sponsorship because we're going to end up raising some money for the Humane Society. And the question becomes, what approach do you take to those people when it's money that we're raising for an event that a bait of Indiana, a 501c3 charity, is going to get the proceeds for? And it's not going to go to another charity. That becomes an educational process. You need to first make sure they understand what a bait of Indiana is really about. So you need to give them a brief explanation that, you know, I'm here from a bait of Indiana. We are a 501c3. We are raising money to help us fulfill our goals of ensuring motorcyclists are not being discriminated against, to ensure that we can fund proper safety programs, and to increase awareness of motorcycling. And, and you really have to give that little bit of an education process to that. The other approach I would suggest you take is, I call it the advertising approach. A lot of these places are not giving you money because it's going to the Humane Society. It, it's coming out of their advertising dollars. That's the reality. And you go in and say, you know, we can put your name on 75 t-shirts that will be around for four years on a whole bunch of people walking all over the place for $75. Well, that's pretty cheap advertising. And in fact, you may find some companies and individuals that are more sophisticated are going to appreciate that more than the charitable side. Because when it comes to the tax side, advertising dollars are 100% deductible always. Charitable dollars have limitations. So that's another way to approach that to people. And I, that's when I go out and talk to people, I talk to them on an advertising basis more than the charitable. I make sure they understand we're a charitable organization and the money's a do-good thing. We're not just trying to make money. So does that help? Yeah, that helps a lot. Okay. We had a charity ride, which most of the money went to a base because we took donations for cleaning supplies and teddy bears. Then the cash made went to a base, but how do you do, we, you know, that we weren't, we weren't sure. Like Chili Fest, that obviously all goes to a bait. And how did they get so many donations? That's what we were trying to figure out for our level. So that's... Because Whistler yeah. don't know how to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it takes...